Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to our channel. So today I'm gonna to be answering one of our most frequently asked questions, and that has everything to do with how much we spent on IVF. So if you are going to be doing IVF soon and you're curious as to how much um, that costs and how, like, everything that goes into that, or if you're just curious to see how much money we spent to get pregnant, <laughs> go ahead and keep watching. All right, so everyone knows that IVF is expensive. Um, it's a big reason why I think a lot of couples don't end up doing IVF or it takes them a while to be able to even consider doing it because the cost is so high. I wanted to preface this video before I start giving you all the numbers and going through the nitty gritty of how much we spent. I wanted to give you a little um, more information um, about the costs of IVF. Um, so there's some things that play into that. Um, every fertility center is going to charge different, have like a different range of pricing. Um, and every state, like costs are going to vary from state to state. I know California costs more, um, like the East coast can sometimes cost more. Um, so every state is going to be a little bit different, um, based off of, I guess, just market value. Um, and then every insurance company is different. Some insurance companies will cover like IUIs um, and so much like a percentage of IVF or um, some insurance, most insurance companies I would say right now don't cover anything. Um, but there are some insurance companies, believe it or not, out there that will cover like multiple rounds of IVF. So all of that can play into the actual cost of what you would have to pay for IVF. And so in this video, I'm not only going to be taking you through the costs of IVF, but I'm actually going to take you through all the costs of our fertility treatments. We did one IUI and all the fertility testing before that. So at least all the costs that I documented, there are going to be some costs that slipped through the cracks over the past, it's been four years since um, we started this whole thing. So um, there will be some missing pieces, but this will be a very close idea of how much we spent. I would say, um, give or take maybe a thousand bucks, I don't know. And before we get into it, I also wanted to give you guys some more details into my situation that, and like the factors that played into the our costs for fertility treatments, including IVF. So we live in Utah. Utah is, um, I would say, average to maybe a little above average as far as cost of living and stuff goes. So that being said, I feel like the cost of fertility treatments here in Utah is about average, um, maybe a little above average. Um, but there really isn't a huge range throughout the states of costs. Everywhere is gonna be pretty close. All right, so in Utah, there are no requirements for insurance companies to um, cover any amount of fertility treatments. So unfortunately for us, our insurance company does not cover anything. And we have a very high deductible. I hate to even say how high our deductible is because people like literally like jaw drops to the ground. They can't even believe it. But our deductible is $10,000. So um, even if fertility treatments were covered by insurance, um, it would be a while before we, I don't know, actually made our deductible. It's crazy. Oh, and if you are curious just about the cost of IVF, I will get to that. But if you want to just jump to that part, I will put like a little timestamp right here. You can go to that point and that's where I'll be talking about all the IVF costs. So four years ago when Eric and I decided that we were ready to become parents, um, it took us a year before we um, decided to go get some help because we just figured something had to be wrong. So that's when we started the um, fertility testing. That was in 2015 and I held on to a lot of the receipts from our fertility testing. So I have kept everything 
in this little folder. All these receipts and all of our IVF stuff um, in this folder and I've gone through it and just added up everything I could find as far as like billing and I guess money that we have spent. <laughs> um, but I, like I said in the beginning of this video, I know I probably have missed some things here or there. Um, but um, for the most part, I'll have it in here. So, um, okay. So as far as fertility testing goes, um, we, you first get start, get started with blood work and our insurance company will cover some of the blood work. Um, but once they start coding it for fertility testing and, um, infertility treatments, uh, then they don't cover as much of it. So what I have written down and I'm going to put these numbers like right here so you guys can see and then, um, get a better idea of what those numbers are. So as far as testing goes, fertility testing, um, like I said, this was about three years ago, 2015 when we started. Um, so like I said, we started with blood work for Eric's blood work and my blood work. Um, during that time period, it was $223 and 24 cents. And then, um, I got an HSG test and, um, for like our, um, appointments and checkups all of that into one little chunk was 374.86. And I do remember that our um, insurance actually did cover half of the, I think they paid for like 50% of our HSG test, which is the, I can't remember how to say it, but it's basically the dye test where they shoot the dye into your uterus and through your tubes or whatever um, to check and see if your tubes are block blocked. But anyway, so we got a nice chunk off of that because I do remember the HSG was about $600 or something and we only paid $299.54. So the numbers I have here, blood work, $223.24 and um, just everything else like the patient visits and the um, HSG and stuff totaled at $374.86. So our total for fertility testing that I can find as far as what I've kept and documented um, was five ninety eight and ten cents five hundred ninety eight dollars and ten cents so that's what you're looking at for fertility testing I'm sure most insurances probably cover more of that kind of stuff um, probably even better than ours because we just don't have upgraded insurance so after our fertility testing we did clomid for three months and just tried naturally because I just kept feeling like maybe it would work for us still um, just naturally. Um, but we tried Clomid off and on, but it was like three months total that we did Clomid. And I think every time we did Clomid, it was like 20 bucks or 10 bucks for the prescription. And I didn't record that, but, um, I know some insurance companies will even cover like the full cost of Clomid, but, um, ours, I don't even know how much Clomid costs to be honest, but, um, I know we paid about 10 to 20 bucks for it. Um, okay. So moving on to IUI after another year of trying naturally, basically it was 2016. We decided to do an IUI per our doctor's, um, recommendation. This was right when we started seeing our fertility doctor and, um, we did go to one of the more expensive fertility clinics in our state, but they just had the highest success rate. And the doctor that I'm with, that I was with, I should say, he is, um, probably like, the, I don't know, I think he has like the highest success rates in the state. He's very well known. Um, so we chose to go to him and I actually didn't record. Um, I did not keep how much that first consultation was, but I'm pretty sure it's around $230, but it's not recorded just so you know. So your consultation with your RE the first time can be about that much. So just plan on that. So for our IUI in 2016, we had to do pre-treatment blood work. Um, Basically just, they screened us for everything. Um, and I know that the doctor also at the consultation did an ultrasound real quick and I'm sure they charged us for that. I haven't recorded that, but just know your consultation at your <laughs> RE's appointment 
your first IRA appointment could be pretty hefty. So back to our IUI in 2016, um, we did the pretreatment blood work, which was 284.52. And then our medications for the IUI, I wasn't on any injectables or anything just for IUI. We just had Famara and then we had a trigger shot. The trigger shot I know was 291.46, which that's, I couldn't even believe that I paid that much just for a trigger shot. Um, and then I also had progesterone suppositories and Famara, but the Famara was pretty cheap. Not cheap, but it, our insurance covered some of that. So um, as far as, so we, the blood work was 284.52. Our medications for the IUI cycle was 366.46. And the IUI at our clinic cost us 935. So there's that. Um, I know a lot of insurance companies that caught, like that pay for IUIs, so I really hope that your guys' insurance company will pay for IUIs. Um, okay, so um, that total came to $1,586.98. So after this first IUI, we decided to move on to IVF, um, and that took about a year anyway um, to be ready financially and emotionally, physically, everything to be ready to do IVF, um, but we just really felt like, we just had this gut feeling that IUIs were not going to work for us. IUIs are not very successful, um, and we have unexplained infertility, and especially for people that have unexplained infertility, they just... They aren't very successful. Anyway, long story short, basically, Eric and I decided that we were just, we're not going to waste our time and money on IUIs anymore because we could do up to, our doctor suggested three of them, um, but we just decided after a year, after like, not even a year, after a month after the IUI, we decided we were going to move on to IVF, but we waited a year to go back to the fertility clinic um, and get the process started. So, January 2018, starting IVF, um, I'll go through what everything cost. All right, so medications for our IVF cycle were $2,860.42, and then we decided to do PGS testing, and for us, um, the testing was 150 per embryo, um, and this just happened to be the cost at the um, at the lab that the clinic that we were at sends those biopsies to, to be tested. Um, I know PGS testing can be a lot more than that. Um, so that just made our decision even easier to make when we were deciding on doing PGS testing. It was like, well, it's only $150 per embryo. So that just seemed like a no brainer for us. Um, I can link down below more videos on PGS testing and why we decided to do it. Um, we just felt like it was best for us and you can learn more by watching those videos. But yeah, so we had eight embryos and so eight times 150 was $1,200. We weren't even charged like a shipping fee or anything for those biopsies to be sent to the lab. It was just a straight $1,200 fee for those eight embryos. Um, so that made our whole cycle, so medications, PGS testing, and then the IVF cycle itself was $12,020. Um, it made the total to $16,080.42. So that's just to get us the embryos that we needed to transfer to hopefully get pregnant. So this brings us to our frozen embryo transfer, and we did this... Um, about three months from when we got the PGS testing back. Um, and so the frozen embryo transfer part was where I felt like it got messy, especially with medications because they only give you so much medication um, because if you don't get pregnant, you don't want to have all that extra medication. Um, so I felt like we were going to the pharmacy a lot to pick up those medications. And luckily, we were able to get all of our medications from a local pharmacy. I compared um, a local pharmacy here in Utah to the Integrity RX that was recommended by the clinic. Um, and they're 
Arizona, and it would have cost us double to get the medications from Integrity RX versus um, the here it's called Rocky or it's Rock Canyon Pharmacy or whatever. So um, we were able to get all of our medications there, and it was convenient because it was um, I was able to go to the pharmacy to get the medications rather than have them shipped. And we had suppositories and stuff, and those have to ship cold. So anyway, it was just more convenient and the best thing was it was lower in cost. So I just have like this really long list in my phone of all the um, costs of our, I saved every receipt um, from the medications for our frozen embryo transfer. It was a lot of medications and a lot of blood work during that time. Um, so I'll just go with the totals here. Um, medications for up until I was 10 weeks pregnant because I am 12 week weeks right now. So spoiler alert, if you're not already watching my channel, um, then uh, you, maybe you don't know I am pregnant. I am 12 weeks this week and um, uh, at 10 weeks we stopped our medications. So from for about two months worth of medications, it cost $680.69 and um, blood work during our frozen embryo transfer time um, was $289.77. Um, we did have to do a pre-screening sonogram, which is like that saline sonogram. Um, and that was $327.92. In that sonogram, they found um, polyps, and so they had to remove those through hysteros hysteroscopy. <laughs> I have all of this um, linked below, I think. Um, you can go watch my vlogs of all of this craziness happening. Um, so the hysteroscopy was $2,225. And that was actually um, billed to insurance, but they don't cover it until we've hit our deductible, which we have. Even though we spent a lot of money this year, we have not had our deductible. So we still had to pay that out of pocket. Um, and then the frozen embryo transfer cycle, the actual cost of that was $2,900. So basically just for them to put the, the embryo into my uterus cost $2,900. So the total for our frozen embryo transfer was $6,423.38. So if this cycle wouldn't have worked, which I'm so obviously so grateful it did, we would have had to do another frozen embryo transfer. If we decide to have kids in the future, which we are, we would love to have more kids. Um, if we have to have kids through um, IVF again, then we're gonna have to do a frozen embryo transfer. We have two more embryos left, so we could do another frozen embryo transfer cycle and that's about how much we would spend um in order to get pregnant again so then once i was pregnant we started um our ob appointments at the fertility center they keep you there um, until they feel like the pregnancy is viable um, so they charge you um for each ultrasound after that and um i was charged a total for two ultrasounds $373.90 for that. Um, and now I'm at my regular OB. I'm no longer seeing the fertility um, doctor. And I think I would assume that things are a little less expensive at a regular like OB or family practice. Um, but I don't really know for sure. I do know insurance, our insurance is now covering um, more because it's it's like now a normal pregnancy. Okay, so those are all the numbers as far as all of our fertility treatments go, but there are some extra costs I'm just going to throw out there um, that I wrote down. So every time I bought prenatal vitamins, it was $22, um, and I was getting uh, the Garden of Life um, raw, like whole food vitamins, so they're a little bit pricier. It's one a day, so a month's supply was about $22 for me. And then I was buying also Omegas every month, or yeah, about every month, and those were $32. And then I bought things like a heating pad and then other um, supplements and vitamins that my doctor was recommending. 
Um, and then I had to do three months on um, bromocryptine, which is a prolactin. It l helps to lower your prolactin levels, which mine were always a little bit high. And so before I did my frozen embryo transfer for three months, they put me on that um, medication to get them normal. And then once they were normal, they took me off the medication. So that medication was kind of pricey too. It was $110 a month. Um, so anyway... So all those extra little costs were at least, I wrote down $402.96 at least, but I didn't count every um, supplement that I ever purchased. Um, so there's a lot more costs that way. So that's why I say it's like give or take $1,000. All right, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the grand total of the past three to four years of fertility treatments and testing and just trying to get pregnant. This is what how much we spent to get pregnant. And that grand total is $25,464.74, give or take $500 to $1,000 because I may have missed some stuff. And if you're counting, you know, like all the supplements and things I purchased along the way as well, those can add up. So Anyway, this is our grand total. This is what it took for us. Uh, I'm not saying that's, that's what it's going to take for you to get pregnant, but um, fertility treatments are expensive. Most insurance companies don't cover them. If yours does, that is so exciting, and I'm so happy for you. Um, take advantage of that because like, if your insurance company will pay for IUIs. I would say do as many IUIs as they'll pay for because people still do get pregnant with IUI. Um, anyway, so the point of this video was to give you guys real numbers, real information, real stories of someone who spent this money to get pregnant um, and a real success story. It was worth it. Would I spend all this money again? Yes, I would because this is our lot this is what we have to do to get pregnant and no it's not fair um sometimes it really downright sucks that some people can just get pregnant no problem um it's just not fair but life isn't fair and that that's that so i'm so so grateful for all the help support we've received from our family and the love and support from you guys um, to get us to where we are right now. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of video and give it a thumbs up. That will help me know that you like this kind of content um, and follow us along on this new adventure of pregnancy. Um, and thank you so much for watching, you guys. We will catch you in our next video. Bye. Get her. scared me. Get her. Get her. No. We got her. Yeah, good job. You're making me nervous by that camera. Please be careful. You smell really, really, really good. Love you. Turn this off.